Hello and welcome to my studio again. My name is Svetlana and today I'm going to do another painting and this is going to be plums. So I have three types of plums here. One is big and two smaller ones and I tried to choose the colors that would be different. Some a little bit in the blue, the others a little bit in the red and I will show my setup and my final palette probably and final painting at the end of the video. Right now due to my technical conditions I can just show one thing at a time and I will be working on it and hopefully my sound this time is better because I'm using a microphone so let me know if you want me to change anything. And I'll keep working on my technical setup, but in the meantime I'll forget about, forget about technical stuff and start painting. So I primed my panel with a little bit of wash, so it wouldn't be completely white, so I could see valleys better. And also I um, did a little drawing of the plums, just uh, contours and some shadows on the plums. And the cast shadows. So let's get started. So if you hear a little bit of noise at the background, this is actually a very severe weather today. We have a very strong winds with snow. So I'm trying not to pay attention to it, but if you hear something banging in the back, that's how strong the wind is. Anyway, so I will actually my cast shadows and um, my uh, form shadows. It was a mixture of ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide. And now I'm making a deeper mixture, ultramarine blue and some permanent magenta and alizarine. And I start working on my first plum. So I'm doing a form shadow, just trying to squint. So this is a plum that has a more blue in it. And you can see that it's very rich color. So at this point I'm making it a little bit lighter. I have a deep purple color. So I'm adding just a touch of um, white to this mixture right now. So it's a little bit purpley red at this side. I'm using a big brush. It's a synthetic brush. I don't know what brand it is because it's all erased but it's um, number eight like I said I'm trying to use big brushes in the beginning so it's a little bit lighter form here and even lighter on top so Plums are the same as grapes, they have a little bit of dusting on them. Especially if you don't wash them. They have this interesting dusting. And I'm not putting highlight yet, I'm just trying to get the shape of it. So I have a light fabric that um, these plums are on and I'm going to paint this fabric in a minute. I just wanted to add a little bit of that fabric color in the plum because it reflects back. We'll just emphasize a little bit more the shadow and if you know the shadow 
normally when it starts a little deeper and then it and sharper but then as it goes away from the subject it gets a little bit softer and duller and the edges becoming softer as well so I'll do that after so at this point I'm going to put my material on material is a um, very light beige color so I added some yellow ochre some transparent red oxide some ultramarine and lots of white to create this kind of beige gray color the first plum is a little bit round but the same as with my previous painting, eggplants, I'm trying to keep it not very round, I'm trying to keep it more um, irregular shape. And I forgot to tell that again, I have a cool window light, I still have enough of daylight. paint um, during day without artificial light. I really want to do it as long as I can. I know that the days are getting shorter, but if I start in the morning, it helps. I kind of made it very soft here, so I'm going to sharpen my edge for this first plum just wanted to see how it will look with the background so do this re-emphasize the edges on this side now I will start building it towards highlight so this is the main area where highlight falls And it's kind of soft highlight, like I said before, when the light comes from the window, it's not as bad as, not as sharp as um, the light from the lamp. And I like that softness that it gives. Give a few bit more. ultramarine and this part is very dark you know some background color gets into plum and other way around some of the plum shadow falls into background but you have to be just keep the balance of that Otherwise, the form will become very flat, even though there is temptation to add all the different reflect reflections into the form. So I see a little bit more blue than purple actually in this plum. So I need more white at this point. So I'm using titanium white as I listed in my materials. So let me try to build a little bit more of highlight and a little bit more blue around it. Um, that's too blue. 
I'm going to get rid of that. I will get a smaller brush and I don't use any medium at all at this point but from Gamsol and Gamsol is a paint thinner and also it can be used for cleaning brushes I want to add a little bit of dusting on top of the plum Highlight is normally a thicker paint. I kind of built a little bit of dusting around it as well because here I see most of dusting and it really looks really really blue so I'll try to paint it as I see and see what happens it's kind of dark blue color with a little bit of purple and a little bit of reflection of this dull tabletop I think the first plum is done in terms of form. I may work a little bit more on it, but I think that's almost there. It kind of gives us illusion of fruit. And I think it looks more like plum than any other fruit. There is a little kind of um, ridge at the back of the plum and I just see it I don't see it that much I'll try to do it and see if it works don't want to spend too much pain don't want to put too much like of that because otherwise I'll lose other parts so and there is a little redemption here Okay. Now I'm going to the second plum and I try to keep these videos really short. One thing you can't easily load videos, upload videos on YouTube if they're too long. I'm still working on that as well and there are different ways around it but I haven't figured out my way yet so that's another reason <laughs> I have to keep it short for now. And the other thing um, the attention span of people, of human beings, is not that big and not everyone can watch and digest information for a long time so I'm the same, like I imagine if I was watching a very long video eventually you start getting, not bored, but you start losing and getting tired so I would like to keep it short it means for me it's also a challenge to paint fast so these two plums are put together and I kind of and even though they're different color I want to paint them as one shape the first one is a little bluey and the other one more into red and again the color mixtures are pretty similar I stay in the same palette so for shadows I use more um, transparent red oxide and some 
ultramarine blue and the other one I added more alizarin because it's redder and the first one I didn't add alizarin for the truth it doesn't matter that much what color it matters more if you get the right value and the right temperature that's what most art artists trying to achieve it's difficult but it's what makes the painting look more real Again, this plum, the first plum, with a little highlight here, so I'll try to build it here, it's kind of bluish again. Has some dust in it as well. second plum actually has this blue coming even though it's a pink one has this bluish interesting dusting around the ridge so I'm just trying to observe all the plum changes. Okay, at this point I'm trying to put a shadow under the plum, so it's cast shadow. So I'm using ultramarine and transparent red oxide. Same cast shadow goes around this plum. And now I'm going to add a little bit of more tabletop around them. Because shadows are very important, especially for these types of paintings when you just put fruit or something on the tabletop, because you really put a lot of focus on this object, so they have to be well grounded where they're located. some of the color from the plum like I said adding a little bit of color 
in the background a tabletop from the objects that's fine because there is a relationship between all the colors in the painting and there is this ongoing play of reflections and light so I don't mind if there is a little bit of color picked up here or there and a little bit of blue because I have cool light from the window not to blend too much background color at the same time I don't want it to overpower my objects correcting form of the plum a little and I can cover it a little with background whenever I see that the form is needs some adjusting I can always do it with help of background, like for example here it's too big. Still trying to see where the most of the dusting goes. is very dark at the back on this side so I have to put it back and it's interesting to see that it has some that red reflection from the other plum I'm going to try to use a different brush that's very soft and it lays the paint better so I use this um, very soft rosemary comb brushes when you need to do very very soft so if you could see how soft this one goes it doesn't really move paint at all that's what I like about these brushes I might try to lay highlight with it as well. Yeah. I'll add a little bit stronger highlight here. Just notice that not as saturated, but there is a lot of blue in this. 
That looks better. That looks better. Mm, look at this bluish. Yeah. So my third plum is waiting to be finished. Even though it's red, it has this nice variations of blue, purple in it as well. So this is the lightest part. I have to mix. Actually, I'm even adding a little bit of cadmium red deep in it, because that's how saturated this red in it. So I'm mixing alizarin pendant and card red dip just to see yeah that works well so first I do some correction of the form the same on the background to cover it around I have to wipe my brush so whichever paint I pick I don't want to go to into background too much So that plum has just a little bit of dust in as well. Uh, so background has all kinds of colors in it, but the ones that at the back, further from the light, a little bit darker here actually, it's a little bit warmer. So I'm adding a little bit of transparent uh, oxide brown and ultramarine blue, but more transparent oxide brown. It's not as dark as cast shadow, but it does have some darkness in it. You can see I'm using repurposed uh, panel again for this study. So when it's study, I think it's um, it's okay to use it as long as it doesn't interfere with your painting, current painting, it doesn't di distract you too much. You can use a repurposed panel, save environment and save yourself some troubles. I ground my panels with um, gambling oil ground. I really like oil ground. I prefer it to acrylic because I like the way the paint lays on it. It's very smooth and it's very pleasant to paint on. Actually, I must admit. So I'm going to do a little bit of background correction on my cast shadow because I don't want it to be very sharp. This will work. And at the front, my tabletop is just lost my shadow. There's a good thing on the oil ground background, <laughs> oil grounded background. You can easy correct your painting. If, for example, you painted something you don't like, you can just wipe it off very easy. Like up. I can show here, for example here, you do this with your paper towel and it's clear and you can paint over it again and of course it's applicable only when the paint is uh, wet. When it dries out it doesn't work as good but what I did in this case was other paintings that I painted as a study so I just painted over it. 
I ground it with oil ground. And it dried and I can use it again. And of course I don't do this with the paintings that I'm painting for someone or the painting I'm going to sell. This is just for studies. For other paintings I'm trying to use only new panels. And some of them I oil ground, some of them I um, glue primed oil linen. There are different options. So I should stop talking and focus on this one. I'm going to switch to my soft brush again. I'm going to build highlight for this one. Again, it has a lot of coolness in it. to emphasize a little bit more highlight here and here. losing this little little ridge in the plum so I have to do it again some dusting so I don't lose it again <laughs> okay but I want to show that this plum is really intense color red here in comparison of course to the other it's not very red but it has more red in it let's see if this will work This is a darker, and I forgot to mention that there is another color that I'm using. It's called um, Feminine Magenta, like with the eggplants. I liked it in a combination of different purples. It also works well for different flowers. So at this point, I'm going to finish my background whatever colors I have left here so I'm going to do it's just a it's background and tabletop at the same time <laughs> I 
have a little bit of um, light brown material at the back, so I'm kind of going to use that. But majority of the material I see it's actually my tabletop, and my tabletop is a lighter color. Kind of leave background like this. I'm not going to spend too much time in it. So need more white again. It's one of the probably mostly used colors, and at the same time, most of artists don't want it in the painting because once you put white, you can lose lots of other colors. At the same time, without white, you can't do much. Even though there are artists who work without white, you can probably work without white if you get used to it. So I'm going to add yellow ochre and white to my front tabletop just to emphasize the front panel, front plane where my fruit is so it will come forward. I'm just going to go just very lightly fill the rest. So I think my painting is almost done. I'm just going quickly to check the shape again against This plum is okay. It's a Lucas shadow. The second plum needs a little bit of going this way and this way. little bit of reflection here and my last plum I also want a very far shape for this one it's like this Very dark at the back. I'm going to add more ultramarine. Just make it darker because it's kind of dull color. I don't even see what color it is. That's how dark it is. And again, I will just do a little bit of negative shape correction. Okay, so hopefully it looks like plums. I'm going to do more dusting on this main plum. To do a little bit more white and see how it works. Kind of dull white. Yeah, I 
think they look like some kind of fruit and hopefully when you look at it you'll see more plum in it than anything else <laughs> hopefully they don't look like eggs or grapes even though there are similarities with all the shapes when you paint them there are certain things like plums are quite reflective but the light doesn't go through them okay so this is the end of the painting and I'm going to show so this is a study and every artist decides how far they can go and try to refine the shape the details and everything else I kind of normally leave it somewhere in the middle when I feel that it looks nice to me and I enjoy looking at them then I call it done so I'm going to show some of my setups just wash my hands quickly by the way what I use for wiping my hands and something that very handy is you'll be surprised this a uh, haggis or any kind of uh, diaper wipes surprisingly they wipe oil paints off your fingers quite well so if you don't want to run to the sink and wash your hands every time or use paper towel because sometimes when you paint you use your fingers and you get dirty these are perfect as a quick solution so now I'm going to show my palette and my brushes so that's how my palette looks I kind of was building around all kinds of purples and blues and browns these are my brushes I use uh, shop towels for wiping my brushes. This is my Gamsol, and as you can see, I didn't even open my medium, it just stays here. But my Gamsol looks very muddy, means I used a lot. And now I'm going to show you my setup. So, this is my these are my plums, and as you can see, I'm using this black box so. This is my natural light setup and I also have a lamp that with cool light that I use when there is not enough daylight but I'm trying to change that arrangement for my setup and now I will try to bring it a little closer and see let me just change something here so these are the brush strokes so this is the plums as you can see when I bring it closer there is much more red in this one and there is more bluish purplish in the other plums okay so I hope you enjoyed this video I tried to keep it short but it went over half an hour but anyway hopefully you heard something useful something useful and you're going to use it in your paintings or use some of my tips so i'll see you again hopefully soon and thank you for watching bye